Though the truth is, it was a struggle, because unless I would have done anything about it this past Now over the last 1200 days, which is about 4 years, I've healed this part of my brain. And the truth is, it was a struggle, because unless I would have done anything about it, this part of my brain would have kept getting smaller every single day. So I've read the studies of over 50 different researchers, and this part of your brain is most likely also shrinking right now. I'll give you the steps which can stop that from happening to your brain in the next few minutes. Many young people in our generation have managed Damn, to do brain this, cooked, it's bro. really a small investment to cooked. save your brain. So basically, there's an area in your brain called the anterior cingulate cortex, ah, or okay. short ACC. Yeah. This part of your brain, the ACC, is connected to all the important areas that control things like hormones, emotions, memories. So I think you're connecting the dots right now. Mm -hmm, you yeah. really want this part of your brain to... It grows when you go through hardships. ...be working. So how do you make sure that this part of your brain doesn't atrophy? Now there's an answer to that which we'll get to in just a minute. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I really like to create an anti-vision before we start. What would you have to do if you really wanted to destroy this part of your brain? Uh, pretty easy. All y'all gotta do, if you wanna destroy your brain, listen up, okay? Go on your phone, stay on TikTok every single day. Now while you're on your phone, open up your computer, and go on all type of XX videos. Just have them playing. Now, when you're done watching, mindlessly scrolling on TikTok and Instagram, go over to that computer and watch all the videos you can. Then when you're done with that, go back, sit down, and do the exact same thing all day, every day. Eat terrible food. Don't work out. Don't even think. And eventually, you'll be a bot and you'll be an NPC. The sad part is, that's a lot of people nowadays. A lot of people are doing the exact same thing. If you wanted to make sure that it becomes as small as possible, first of all, you would make sure that you would never have to overcome resistance in your life. You would never stop yourself from accessing your cravings. You would make sure to never deal with your own emotions and thoughts and instead shift the responsibility to the outside world you would make sure that you grow such a deep dependence on your phone that you would say in questionnaires that you can't live without it. Now, if you're watching this video, you're smart and you understood that if this part of your brain gets smaller, you lose your willpower. Now, this makes sense because the way we're using technology has changed our brains. We've gone from using technology as a means to organize information and help us to now being turned into products by our own phones. The way you're using your technology is weakening your ACC. Another study of patients with a damaged ACC has shown us that they lose their entire self-efficacy, so their belief that they can achieve something. These patients end up wanting to just lay in bed all day and do nothing more than the most basic needs for some- That, sound, that, sound, that sounds about right to some of y'all, huh? Y'all get PTSD when y'all think about that, huh? Y'all just be in the bed all day doing nothing with yourselves. Hey man, y'all gotta really lock in, bro. <laughs> Cause the way the world works now, we not even looked at as humans, as he said, we looked at as products. Survival. Now in my opinion, there's a strong connection to be drawn between those patients and the habits of our generation of just laying in bed and scrolling all day. Yeah, we're cooked. Quick side note, if you Gigi. really want to understand this, read the book Stand Out of Our Light by James Williams, which really shows you the absurdity of the attention economy. Now, don't get me wrong. I was also very much struggling with this, so I want to show you what helped me get through it and how you can do it too. The short answer is voluntary discomfort, but there's a lot to unpack here and a bunch of details to consider if you really want to make this as effective as possible. Now, I want to start by splitting up the idea of voluntary discomfort into two areas physical discomfort and mental discomfort. And if you really want to own your mind, it's important that you practice both. Now in some of the research showing us that you can grow your ACC. Yeah, go jump in a, go, go jump in a, a negative, uh, go jump in a, an ice cold lake while, while listening to some podcasts. <laughs> through voluntary discomfort, the participants did things like rowing exercises. But what I want you to understand is that it doesn't really matter what you just you can't do, like what you as do as long as it's truly uncomfortable to yeah. you. What I want you to look out for is that inner voice of resistance. That inner voice that tells you all the reasons why it would be horrible to go to the gym today, 
why it would be horrible to leave your bed and why it would be horrible to get yourself through an entire workout. The way you grow your ACC is by actively arguing and overcoming this voice. It's by overcoming your inner resistance. But AKA physical, your inner bitch. That's, that's, let's just keep it a being. Discomfort isn't just limited to going to the gym. It's also inhibiting yourself from doing things which you really, really want to do. For example, it can also include resisting the urges to indulge in things like junk food or pornography. Not only will resisting those things grow your ACC, but you'll be more healthy, more confident, less anxious, and the sexualizing image that was put into your head by pornography will be destroyed. Now let's go back about 2300 years ago and look at how Stoics like Marcus Aurelius were spending their days. It was one of their key practices to meditate all the negative things that could happen to them, even their death. They called it negative visualization. Not only is this a form of mental discomfort that if practiced correctly can grow your ACC, but you'll also gain gratitude and perspective for your own situation. It's the awareness of one's mortality, the idea of constantly reminding yourself that you could be dead right now or could be dead soon. Practicing a combination of both physical Yeah, when I think of uh, when I think of gra uh, gratitude and perspective, uh, even today I told myself I was like, uh, I woke up, I was like, thank you for another day. But then I told myself, the way that I show thank you, my thanks to you, is by seizing the day through action. You don't get those types of thoughts in your head if you're just constantly overwhelmingly or if you're just you're in the sunken place essentially like you can't get out of it you don't even have the wherewithal or the self-awareness to be thinking about how you should get out you're too busy locked in your brain is too cooked for you to even realize what you need to be doing because what you're currently doing feels good to you from all the dopamine that you've been getting physical and mental discomfort for the past few years has been really impactful on the way that i perceive life it's really changed how I view a good versus a bad experience or an exciting versus a boring experience. It's a process that takes time and I've definitely had my fair share of fuck ups along the way and absolutely not following these principles. But if I can say one thing, it is that these things actually get easier with time as they become a part of your identity the more you do it. and are actually able to shape your brain. What I mean is that making voluntary discomfort one of your key habits neuroplasticity. can actually cause neuroplasticity. Yes. So the changing of your brain. I was gonna talk about that. People think that our brains are like our brains can't grow at a certain time. Like you can't teach your old dog new tricks, but you you can. Our brains are are little sponges that always want to learn and to grow, and it's up to us to give it the right inputs. These changes can be in size, for example, in the size of your interior cingulate cortex, but they can also be in the number of receptors, for example, your dopamine receptors. What happens when you repeatedly engage in voluntary discomfort is a decrease in the amount of dopamine receptors present in your brain. Though, of course, this is super simplified, this means that you need less stimulus in order to achieve the same amount of joy and mm -hmm. pleasure in your life. Your baseline is lower. Which basically equals to you enjoying the work and the difficult things in life. Mm -hmm. Do things that suck, so In my opinion, if you really wanted to reap the largest benefits of voluntary discomfort, you should combine them with a sense of mastery. The idea of simply mastering any field of your choice. When you view voluntary discomfort through the lens of mastery, it gains an entirely new meaning. It helps you figure out why you're actually doing these things and how they will help you in your pursuit of mastery. What this means is that you will own your mind on a level you've never experienced before. The voices and sounds of content you've consumed won't be blabbering and screaming over your own ideas. But instead, you'll get to hear yourself. Those phases messing me up. I think I'm in like I think I be, I'm thinking like I'm in like an illusion or something. And clearly, the transitions for the first time. My name is Jonah. I am 18 years old, and my aim is to help as many of you, so the young people of our generation, to really own their mind. I think it's the first and most important step we as a generation need to take if we're striving for a better future in which our minds won't be productized and abused. Thank you so much for watching and if you want to really learn how to own your mind from all the different angles, neuroscience, psychology, philosophy and maybe some more, 
then just subscribe. Shout out to you, Jonah. 18? Hey. Yo, you already miles ahead of everybody. I ain't gonna lie. Because at 18, I was not thinking about this as much. Um, But yeah. Gotta heal y'all brains, bro. Y'all gotta do stuff that, that y'all don't wanna do. Y'all gonna find a lot more happiness. Y'all gonna find a lot more dopamine. Y'all gonna enjoy what you actually do. And the anxiety will go away. But yeah, with that being said, until the next one, seize the day. That's why I always say seize the day. Seize the day usually means doing something that you probably don't want to do and just doing it anyway. Do it like you love it. That's really it. But until the next one.